giant kelp, or Macrocystis periphera, creates the rich underwater forests of our nearshore waters in Southern California. Giant kelp is one of the fastest growing plants in the world, in peak growing season growing over two feet a day and providing tall columns that reach from over 100 foot depths. Near the surface, white patches of an animal called bryozoan grow on the kelp blades. As the summer progresses, warm water and heavy surf will break and shred the kelp blades near the surface. Kelp needs sunlight to grow. Carbon monoxide filled gas bladders buoy up the kelp fronds on the surface. As the kelp breaks off and washes ashore, vegetative blades at the base of the plant will release the seeds for the following generations of kelp the next year. The term kelp forest is created by these long columns of kelp plants that rise to the surface and spread out in mats of kelp blades on the surface. The kelp forest literally provides protection for hundreds of marine fish and other marine species. The plants sway with ocean surge and currents without breaking. This is the thick mat of the kelp canopy near the surface and close to shore in Laguna Beach. Harvesting of kelp used to occur in Southern California but now is done in Chile and South Africa. The dried powder in product alginate is used as an emulsifying and binding agent in foods such as salad dressing, ice cream, toothpaste, cereals and molds in dentistry. Early in the 20th century, it was also used to make gunpowder. Late summer heavy surf powered by a hurricane off of Baja, California, has broken up all the weakened kelp plants and washed them ashore up onto the beach. This is kelp litter, and uh, this is the remains of the kelp plants in the kelp forest offshore. Shorebirds quickly look for meals buried within the kelp litter. So uh, this is the root system of the kelp plant. It's called a hold fast. This is what grabs onto the rocky substrate and holds the kelp plants down. And uh, this is, when a kelp plant gets uprooted, this is what breaks loose from the heavy surf and so forth. Here's another example of a larger hold fast. And you can see the, uh, the haptera, or which are the maroon and brown quasi root structure that grips onto the rocks. And uh, this is what comes loose when the kelp plant float ashore, either to become drift kelp or end up on the beach somewhere. And that's what happened here. High tides will wash the litter back into the sea for further nutrients. These thin fronds just above the base or the holdfast are called the vegetative blades. They form the seeds of the new plants of future generations. On the beach, small land animals such as kelp flies and isopods or little pill bug-like animals will feast on dried mats, reducing it to kelp litter and dissolved organic matter in a few days. Waves and tides will then wash the nutrients back into the sea, providing food for marine creatures again. The 
It's a week later and the surf is down, but the water temperature is way up. It's 73 degrees. This is bad for kelp. What you see here on the sandy bottom is kelp litter, broken up blades of macrocystis. This kelp litter will continue to break down into ultimately dissolved organic solids which provide nutrition for the many other marine species in the near shore waters.